Oh, you I, can't I, wear them. I'm trying to find glasses everywhere. <laughs> you You've been talking to me Mark, for five minutes. No, no, but I've just seen you in the screen the way they're going to see you. Oh, I can't find any of my they're glasses. They're awful. You look like your names. I don't Elaine. Know. Not Barbara. Not Gladys. Elaine. Which is fine if you are a woman, but it doesn't suit you, Elaine. It really doesn't. Okay, so today, good morning, everybody. How are you? Good morning, Margaret. Good morning, Hazel. Good morning, Julie, Sarah, Rajmi, Mojito, Heather, Kyra, Gillian, Wendy, Jenny, Fiona, Ellery, Joanne, Deborah, Bev, Lisa, I, April, Hill. Good morning, everybody, on this wonderful Monday morning. Woo! Oh God, what's he got now? Oh, not your media wanker yeah. ones. Oh, Mark. They're better than my Janet Street Porter ones. Oh my God, you look like so... What was it Maddie said to you last night? She goes, oh, Mark, she goes, Daddy, those glasses don't look like the sort of glasses you wear. They're the sort of glasses that if somebody else was wearing them, you'd say, say what, what a wanker. wanker. <laughs> <laughs> She's so true. She did, and he said to her, God, you're so right, Maddie. Yeah, I'm such a wanker. <laughs> they know him so... So they well. know me so well. So the other Can night... We push on? I've got an essay to write. So the other night, Kiki says to me, Mum, where's the jar of Nutella? And I said, oh, we left it in the rental place, honey. I didn't bring it back. And she was like, oh. And then we hear, he was in here, and then suddenly he's in the downstairs loo. Right, and so Kiki went... Daddy, and he went, I didn't say anything. And straight away, Kiki went, he's lying. Because she could hear in his throat that he'd gone tight. He was hiding in the downstairs loo. Anyway, turns out what? He'd eaten the whole jar. We had brought it back. Did you bring it back yourself in your own bag? No, you brought it back. But I, so he goes, I so it's it. about 10 o'clock at night and he goes to Kiki, I mean, do you want me to go and get you another jar? And she went, yes, please. And you had to go out at 10 o'clock at night and go and get her another jar. We've hidden it really well. I said, as I handed it over, I said, hide it. This is like a crack pipe to a crack addict. It literally is. They look very <laughs> the finished. Says, These are Finnish. These are Finnish. Oh, he does look Finnish. I look like I'm from Finland. I don't mind that. I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. Uh, so... Honest to God, I don't know who you are or what you are. I was never going to marry a man that looked like that. <laughs> Fucking hell, what can I do? I need to see. I'll let you off, but only... I can't these, do all day with these those. These are great. These are great for writing, though. They're just brilliant. They don't have that sort of limit around the sides because they're, they're, they're like that. Um, Euphoria is out, says Ethan Johnson. Very exciting. Oh, my God. We love the trailer. Check out our trailer review on here. It's mm. so good. You look very handsome today. Who said that? Oh, thanks, Deborah. Deborah did anybody see Mark's little dance that he did for me yesterday on Insta on my Instagram? So funny. It made me laugh so much. I watched it so many times. And I thought we could have a little quick warm-up before we go to the news. What is the, what are the what are the things that your partner still does for you that you think, ah, oh, you still want me you still want to pull me? Oh, I can't say some of those. When you things. show off. Oh, when I show off. Um No, what do I do? I'm trying to think. Uh you cook lovely food. You make a lovely dish. You make. You literally can sum up my mood and solve my mood with food. <laughs> yeah, that's that true. Is, it's true. She'll, she'll that's know true. exactly what will just sort my shit out. I look like Morton Harkett. Is that the guy? Who's he? Morton Harkett. Is he From, in a band? Aha. Um, uh -huh. um, uh -huh. No, no. So what does no, your no. part... What's what does no, your, no. What does your part... I want to know. Where did that come uh -huh. from? Aha. No, no. No, no, aha, uh aha, -huh. uh -huh, yeah, no, no. Mark, don't. So, yeah, Nadia, so Nadia innovates around food. fucking starving this morning. She innovates around food. That's what you do to keep me happy. My, my stupid dancing keeps you happy. I love your dancing. Yeah. What about that time when I was dancing with my ding-a-ling-a-ling? -a -ling? Oh, my God, we were listening to that tune because we went to see Licorice Pizza the other day and Mark bought the album, the soundtrack, and... Um, one of the tunes on it is, do you remember that song? My ding-a-ling, my ding-a-ling. No, that's Doesn't not how it goes. Like that, no. Anyway, oh my God, we listened to it and Kiki was so shocked. She said, God, are people allowed to do tunes like that? Do you remember it? Yeah. Mark, sing the proper tune. I can't remember it, but it says ding-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling. 
Uh, Tra La La says, my son Dan is exactly the same with Nutella. His sister gets so annoyed as she never gets any. Um, oh, can I just say hello to Ruth Blanford? Welcome to the family guest area. You've joined after all this time. Oh. That's lovely that you've joined us. Oh, welcome. And Sam Doherty mm. says, my husband makes me laugh, proper belly laugh all the oh. time. Oh, I try oh, to make Nadia laugh like that. I think it's quite nice when boys try to make you laugh because it does mean they fancy you. Yeah, I try and make you laugh. I know you do, don't you? Oh, it's Chuck Berry, Jenny Matthews says. Oh the my God, it's pure filth. After this, after this live, go and listen to it. It's quite extraordinary. It's called ding a ling or ding a long. Ding a ling a ling. I played with my ding a ling a ling. That was outrageous. Um, Sam Doherty, I am really hungry as well today. I'm doing 16 8 and I'm just waiting a bit longer um, to eat because I want to finish eating at 7 today, which yeah. means I've got to wait until 11 to eat. Vanessa Hoggett, I remember that song, I Want to Play with My Ding a Ling. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind it's, of but, but you you probably don't remember how filthy it is. He's on the kitchen floor. He's everywhere playing with his ding a -ling. Um What's the... I've got to write a two and a half thousand essay. How many pages is that? I don't know. Choose your words right, Mark. Oh! We were just talking over on Instagram, but oh! I'm, I'm going through a real fear again about dementia and that I've got early onset because my brain isn't working at all. I'm saying words the wrong way round. I'm using the wrong words. I'm tripping over my words. And Mark said to me, you, it's not that you've got dementia or anything. It's that you've got a better. lazy brain. No, I didn't. And you don't choose, because you don't take the time to choose your words. Hang on, can I qualify I thought, this? Can I f qualify this untruth that has been well, you spread do say across? Hang on, day. hang on. I, you don't have a lazy brain, as in you are... Mm -hmm. You just, you aren't attentive. You're lazy around your choice of words sometimes. You just run at something, but you don't stop and think what you're right. saying. Okay, this is all very interesting, but... I didn't know you're supposed to choose your words. I've well, never chosen. Why my do you words. think there's a phrase? Choose Are you choosing your words? your words now? Kind of, yes. You're not. You're just speaking. Yeah, but there's well, a this moment. This is giving me a nightmare. This, a I don't even know what you there's mean. There's a moment before speaking so, oh, to, see, to, I never to prevent think dementia. Before. Slow it down. Read thirty pages a day or learn a language. Slow it down, babe. Slow it down. Because what happens is, imagine if you do anything fast, you slur. You'll slur through them. Sometimes you slur. You're not even listening to me. No, I got bored. So. <laughs> but you slur. You slur your words. I know, but I think that's because of my No, brain. it's because you're charging your head like a bat out of hell. Kyra says, sounds like ADHD, I have the same problem. Exactly, that's what it is. She, she rushes through words. It's not because she's got a lazy, lazy Tia Deacon brain. says you sometimes have to consciously think of your words. Yeah, of course you do. God, I don't think I ever have. I'm thinking about what I'm saying. No, you're not. You're yes, just I am. It. I was thinking as I said it. This is an existential nightmare. <laughs> existential. <laughs> I love the way you say it. Existential. I prefer that. Uh, Natasha Milton, Nadia, I just got back from Cyprus where I gained three kilos. Oh. Don't eat much meat at home, so that must be it. And that's despite averaging 20,000 steps when there. I might have to try 16 8. I've done, this is, I've done two days of 16 8 now. But two, since Christmas, because you've been on it for ages. Yeah, I've been on it for ages and just couldn't get back on it. I've done two days. And yes, you wake up hungry, but a glass of water really sorts it out. And yes, I was agitated before bed, but just went to bed early and read. Um, but, but I would say start with um, 14.10 and then work, or even more, 12.12, 12, and then reduce it by an hour, by an hour. Another thing is if you've been eating loads of sugar and loads of white carbs... It's quite good before you start 16, 8 or 10, 14, whatever, to just reduce them down a bit first so that you're not... Because when Mark first went on 16, 8, he went from loads of sugar and carbs to 16, 8. So he, it was like this. You were just craving in the, in the evening, weren't you? Mm. So don't set yourself up to fail. Land the plane sl slowly. This isn't a diet that you come on and go off and come on and go off. This is a way of eating for life. So... Just, 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 just start really gently. There's no rush. You know, there never needs to be a rush when trying to balance out your weight. That's mm -hmm. where I always went wrong. I always want something to just fix it quick. But that's your Bad approach diet. to sentences. I know. You want your sentence Have you to noticed sort I'm it trying quickly. to be, I'm trying to talk more slowly. Outlandish creations. I'm thinking about what I'm saying. Outlandish creations, I hope you're well. I think I have ADHD. I can never think about what I say. I mean, don't get me oh, wrong. Oh, thank I'm not... you, Shakira, Bad. Did you hear that? Thank you. No. 
Outlandish creations. I think I have ADHD. I can never think about what I say. Well, this is what I mean, outlandish creations. Have we just never known that we're supposed to think about what we say? It's not like you sit there with a notebook going, I'm going to say this, and then you say it, because otherwise conversation wouldn't happen. But when you're moving through a sentence, I think if you're not going at the... Yeah, I never think about it. I definitely then never think about it. Then you're definitely going to hit a hurdle, aren't you? I've hitting hurdles. You're hitting hurdles. <laughs> <laughs> I've been hitting hurdles all my life. Oh yeah, but a lot of the time you don't. And as Shakira, uh, Shakira Bad says, you do think about your words on your podcast, Nadia. You think carefully when it counts and it's a sensitive topic. You're very sweet. Thank That's you. very true. You made me feel a bit yeah. better. So maybe you should think about them a bit more here. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't get many um, comments on how... I'm trying to speak slowly, slowly, Henrietta. On what people do either for their partner or their partner does for them to make them happy. Yeah, guys, come on, tell us what... Someone said their partner, their husband, runs them a bath. I That's think, nice. Yeah, I'd like but to... But does that mean they want sex? Oh, my God. A lot fun. of women talk about this. They go, they? oh, God, when they run a bath and put a candle on oh. the side. You know what that means? That and means they, they want sex. Bedebus. What is that stuff? Bardi <laughs> <laughs> I call it Bardi Dar. It's Bardi Dar. My mum always called it Bardi Dar. Bardi Bars. Bardi Dar. Bardi Bars. Bardi Dar. It's got an S at the end of it, hasn't it? Bardi Dars. Bardi Dar. Bardi Dar. Bardi Dar. Someone just joined us now. Bardi Dar. <laughs> Bar -bar -ba -da. Uh I used to run baths with candles and put Bardi Dars in. Oh, God. How old But I was not... Why didn't you just say, can we have sex, please? Because I wasn't after that. I wanted to make them feel comfortable and Rubbish. wanted. Yeah, comfortable so that they would have sex. No, the only caveat to it all was I was usually in the bar. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> With a flower in your mouth, yeah, exactly. No, I hate that kind of thing. I, I hate it when somebody's doing something they would never normally do to try and have sex. Oh. Like, if they would never normally get a bunch of flowers and they get a bunch of flowers and then it's like... Oh, yeah, no, that's ridiculous. And then it's like, oh, well, I've got you some flowers. I hate that. That's bartering within a relationship. It's terrible. There's a lot of bartering. That's a good one for a how to say married. The that's inner, a really good one. The inner bartering of a, of a relationship. Anita there is Burke's a... husband makes her happy by doing the washing up. Oh. I look... It's, Nadia it is, it's will say that I don't do it a lot, but I like to, when I do the kitchen, do it completely. So like the other over the well, weekend. Well, apart from wiping down the sides, that's you wiped, not true. You wiped down the sides at the weekend, and right. I was. You have never done that in but our darling, whole I marriage, and I love it. I fill. No. I fill the. You don't do the, the sides. What's it called? The bucket. It's not a bucket. What do you call it? The don't think about the it. You might get there. I'm thinking. <laughs> basin. I it's pick not up a basin. the plastic basin. It it's is. What would you call it? Basin. What would you call it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, precisely. At least I'm clutching the word. What's the thing in the? The plastic. Washing up bowl. Washing up bowl. I lift it, I always lift it up, place it on the... This is boring. <laughs> <laughs> this is really fucking no, boring. No, but people know what I mean when I say if the sides aren't cleaned, nothing... If you come in and all the stuff is still sticky on the sides with crumbs... I couldn't agree more. And then another thing that you do do quite a lot, Mark, is you go, I've piled everything over to the side and I have to say thank you. Because I haven't I'm got like, time to do any more. Yeah, but... but but you didn't do the washing up. You piled everything over to the side, which is nice, but I shouldn't have to say thank you. I always have to say thank you. Like, I never say to you, oh, look, I've, 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 I've yes, piled do. everything over to the side. No, I wouldn't. You, do. you tell everyone I've off. I've piled everything over. I, I never say to you, oh, I've emptied the dishwasher. That's true. That's true. Because, oh. because that would mean I'm saying to you, can you thank me for emptying the dishwasher? Sarah Down says... I never say to you, I've just pulled all your hair out of the shower. Hang on one second. I never second. say, I've I wiped always all the men's your hair pee out. from round the... Oh, what? that's just horrible. Mark, once that's you pulled the horrible. hair out. No, I pulled out a head of hair. Yeah, once. My husband must be very disappointed because he always runs me a bath and doesn't get it. <laughs> says Sarah Downs. Well, maybe you've got a nice husband who's just running you a bar. Oh, my God. Do you remember this? Emma Kriag, Kria says, what about a hoi matey in the bath? Do you remember that? With a little oh, sailor's head. I want some. So do I. I'm going to see if they've got any insane. I want today. some. Is they, do they a still make it? A hoi matey. Yeah. Do you know what we used to get for the kids? We used to get that spray foam and we'd let them have the whole can and they'd be in the bath for about two hours. Do you remember with the oh, spray yeah, can? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Pretending they had we to shave. We did all the things you're not supposed to do. Uh, my husband says, I've done this for you, says Elaine Ginolfi. Yeah. 
So what else do people do to make them happy? Oh, Obviously no, hang on. Zoe's ex used to strip off. Zoe, my ex used to strip off and wait for me on the sofa. Oh. I just wanted to watch TV, for fuck's sake. Mm. You should have hit him with your remote. If somebody stripped naked and just waited for me, I think I'd call the police. Do you know what I would have liked? Do you know what I would have liked, <laughs> Zoe? Is if you'd have situated a... If you had a camera watching him waiting, that would have been so funny. Oh, that would have been that funny. That would have been so, sort of readjusting himself, probably breathing in. Would anyone find that sexy? I suppose men would. Like, if you came home and I was just lying on the sofa naked, would you find that sexy? Would you find it intimidating? There, can I be brutally honest with you? There's this really gross assumption that men are up for it all the time. No. No, walk through the door and you're, you're ready for it. No, I want to go and have a wash. I want to go and have a shower. Yeah. Uh, no. I don't like starting sex naked. I think it's horrible. Well, you've got nowhere to go. <laughs> Have you? I mean, what, you end up with your clothes on. You? You'd have to get back the other way. I wonder if anyone's got a kink where they actually like to dress themselves up as they move through it. So you come out of it more clothed than you went in. I don't think so. No, it'd be silly, wouldn't it? <sighs> we were here for the news. So, guys... Welcome to our channel. Hit the subscribe button um, and the notification bell so you never miss us. It's my birthday, Diane. Happy birthday to you, Diane. Diana. Happy birthday to you, Diana. Diana. Happy birthday to Diana. Diana, Diana, Diana. Happy birthday to you. Trina isn't feeling well. Big hug to Trina. She's not Big feeling Trina. well. Um, oh, Trina Cotton, yes. Claire Big Cummings hug. says to you, Zoe, no wonder he's an ex. There you go. You see, sometimes in these blurby 15 minutes at the front of these chats, it's where most pearls of wisdom land. I thought about every one of those words. Every and you could feel one. it. You could, could feel you? it. It wasn't natural. Could you? It wasn't natural, was it? It was pre-scripted. I'm not going to think about my words. Come on then, deliver your next line. Um, thinking about my words or not? You thought about them then. I know. This is, you, you carry on. I don't like it. <laughs> I can hear myself. You don't want to, you don't, <laughs> you really don't want to do that. You really don't want to hear yourself. Oh, God, God almighty. Um, nice day off to catch you both. Rachel S. Faith Close, I want to see oh, that. Oh, Stay Close, the series. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a new series starting on Wednesday starring Maxine Peake which we fancy the idea, the idea of watching. Um, we're probably not going to persist with Screw. Sorry. But... Um, no, can you write down Chloe for her birthday? But I think we are going to try and watch this and review the uh, new drama on Wednesday night. I forget what it's called. What's it called? Anyway, Maxine Beach is a great actress. Um, Nicole Higgins rehearses conversations before she has them. Oh, wow. I do sometimes. I have to. I, say, I have to say. What, I, I tell you why this is becoming quite crucial for me is that when you're we're doing lots of role playing um, therapy sessions at the moment, and when you're in a situation where you are quite literally responsible for someone's welfare as they're talking through things, you choose your words really carefully. So you oh, are. Well, that's a really thinking, good point because mm. I don't, and I think I sometimes. I was I was reading something on Instagram the other day, and it was it was. It was kind of like tips on how to be boundaried with people and how to, like before, say you were coming in with a really traumatic story. I was watching Housewives of Miami yesterday and there was this woman at this dinner party, wasn't she? She was just telling one traumatic story after another. Yeah. And, um, and I've always been like that. I'm always a big share. I come from a big family where everybody talks about everything and I'll just say anything. And I was reading this thing on Instagram and it was saying how you should ask somebody before you're going to tell a difficult story or something possibly that could upset somebody, you should ask them whether they're able at that moment to mm. have this story. And I, I immediately went, oh, for God's sake, what have we come to? And then I thought about it a bit afterwards and I thought, oh my God, have I just gone through my life spewing onto people and maybe causing them anguish with no real thought for how my story might impact on them and the answer was yes well you and dina do it collectively yeah. you charge into a room you overwhelm the room you hijack the room with trauma in your conversation and we all have to go with it and then if anyone else mentions a drama on television that might involve someone possibly being arrested you have a freak out yeah it's ludicrous there we go um, anyway, the series is called about. Rules of the Game, I think, on, on Wednesday. I think someone just mentioned. Um, happy birthday, Chloe. Did we do Shakira, happy birthday? Most happy people, birthday, Susie. <clears throat> Shakira says, most people don't ask permission before offloading. I'm going to be honest. I don't know how I would ask. 
I would feel like a bit of a prat. As soon as I've said, if I said to you, listen, I've got this really, something's all right. Well, how would you say it? Would you say, oh God, something really awful's happened today. Can I tell? I suppose you would just say, are you all right for me to tell you? Because I'll tell you this, I'm going to be really honest. If my friend said, no, I'm not in a position to listen to you, I wouldn't like them anymore. Right, okay. So they're so baked into this idea is the idea that they have to say yes. <laughs> yeah. So there's no because, choice. Because I couldn't imagine somebody coming to me and saying, oh my God, I've had this terrible thing happen. You all right for me to tell you and saying no. If it was somebody I cared about. Minky Moose says, say hashtag trigger warning. I think, I, okay, can I just say, in that instance, what you're just talking about, you've got something traumatic and difficult that you want to talk about. You're kind of preemptively asking the person opposite you to potentially help you, right? Mm. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. What did I just say? Friend of a friend potentially asking to help I didn't you. say friend of a friend at all. You, that was a It's because I was reading this woman. I was really interested yeah, in that because I've it. got a number I'll of friends. Can you hold it for, hold it for it me? AR. I want to read out. Um, when you go up to someone and say, I've had something really traumatic, you're essentially enforcing on that situation i'm just the using trauma. no no listen to me mm. that you're you're about to ask that person to be a helper in some way you're going to want them to listen you're going to perhaps want just unburden yourself you're wanting them yeah. to be in some capacity a helper well really it's it's incumbent on the person you are you're about to talk to to mm. say do you know what i literally haven't got the time for this right now but i will have the time later maybe we could talk at such but and then such. you're putting all the responsibility on the other person ar says i had breast cancer and if people start telling me about a friend of a friend who had cancer, blah, 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 I ask them to stop because I don't want to fill my brain with info that will make my head implode. Mm. So, you see, yeah. You just don't know what people's private struggles are, do you? Yeah, no, absolutely. Acantha says something really important there. I think with certain people, especially really good friends, you'd know if something you want need to talk about would trigger them mm. and you would choose someone else. Yeah, so you kind of preemptively know whether you can talk to someone or not. Mm. Um, yeah. Jamie, he was 16 yesterday. Happy birthday, Jamie. Happy birthday to you, Jamie. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to, to you for yesterday. Happy birthday, dear Jamie. Jamie. Happy birthday to, to you. you. Um, We've got some names here for birthdays. Yeah, so we'll sing at the Susie end. Susie and Chloe. Um, news. So news. Uh, the big news story that's going to be developing this week is, is it time to live with the virus? Is it time to live with COVID? What, what do does you that think, mean? Guys? It, well, is it time to kind of essentially stop reporting it, stop kind of going on about the number of infections, yes. all this kind of stuff. Now, in saying that, again, the caveat is that there is never going to be a safe time for a vast number of people in society who are vulnerable. But do we generally think, as an, an idea, with the caveat that there may be, there needs to be some sort of catering for the vulnerable, um, do we have to, do we have to just let go and let God, as they say in AA? Uh, it starts Tuesday, rules of the game. Thanks, Julie Franks. Um, Natasha Milton, yes, so having been incredibly careful, I'm officially fed up. Oh, do you mind? We should fear all disease, says Minky Moo. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think there's no, there's no time to ever sort of stop being attentive. But do you feel that there's, is there some point that we have to say, okay, it's a, it's a difficult bedfellow to live with? Um, Melanie Williams, we still need the data though, it's still a new virus, we need to under Yeah, and I think as long as the authorities get the data, that, that's important. Um, you know, I don't think there's any, I don't think there should be any stopping of getting the data, but I think this sort of public sort of announcing uh, and all this kind of stuff. Right, so it's like, what does living with the virus look like to you? And for me, it is no more telling us the numbers yeah. because I think it's very anxiety driving for people inducing. I think um, we've got to stop testing, mass testing the entire time. Well, I, I don't know. Do. I don't necessarily think that, I, th I think it's about, I think it's about optics. I don't necessarily think that the, I think they should carry on gathering information because I think it's important. Mm -hmm. we are, we're still relatively early within the potential cycle of this disease or this virus. I think gaining the information is one thing and the data, but constantly showing it to us as a nation, I think we now need to be t brought out of our sort of trauma. Mm. I think we're in a sort of, you know, we've all got PTSD from this and I think we need to just slowly, slowly. I think we do need to start shifting more yeah. to the many, many, you know, and, and the many cases of cancer. Sorry, I to talk about cancer you know, that are going undiagnosed, treatments not being, you know, with this, there, there, 
we've said it a lot. Yeah. Like, what about all the other diseases? And what about all the other operations? And what about the mental health? And what about... We actually now are going to have to make really difficult decisions. Yeah. And, of course, there's always going to be... If we shift our focus a bit away from this, there's going to be people... There's going to be some people that that impacts mm. for them and, 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 and scares them. But there's very scary situations going on, you know... In a 300, we've got to look at the whole pie dish. Yeah. For a long time, we've just been looking at this part of the pie. Sarah Down says, I think if there's any crazy new info, then we should hear about it, but everything else just go back to normal. Still yeah. wear masks, wash hands, we should do that anyway. And Matthew Godwin says, vaccines for those who are vulnerable, but let everyone else live life again. No more testing, no more daily reporting of data, scaring people unnecessarily. Necessarily, because I think the fear and the stress and the anxiety, again, we know is really, really bad for our health and our immune systems. We still don't know what the hell's going to happen. Mm. with all of our all of our um, health a bit further down the line and we need to start paying real attention to it and we need to just keep getting the message out there that people have got to look after themselves better i think there's i mean a... we got hit really hard and in america because yeah. we have very poor poor health poor diet we don't eat yes. well here we we, 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 they should be championing from the tops of buildings and shouting and cheering about you know some form of healthy the problem is if everyone was as healthy as they need to be an entire section of the economy would be just knocked out yeah. which is unhealthy eating fast food and all that kind of malarkey the way i mean there's lots of reports coming out now Drink, the why alcohol. the why we've been hit so hard in this country in america is because we have appalling diets mm. there might be a lot of obesity but that doesn't mean people are eating well there might be a lot of skinny people. Do skinny people listen? Doesn't it yeah, exactly not, mean that they're size, getting five, six, seven, eight fruits and vegetables mm. a day, whole grains, good protein, you know, um, good fats, all that stuff. And actually, there's a huge misconception in this country that all of that stuff is very, very expensive. The most expensive way to eat is with processed foods. They are so expensive. And so, you know, getting back, you know what I'd like, you know, in the 80s when we used to have all those shops where you'd go in and you'd shovel, like, you'd shovel your lentils and your mm. rice into bags and it was really cheap, low on packaging, good mm. for the planet and a cheaper way to do it because you're not spending on packaging. If only this government could get really get behind on mm. really helping people, forcing the manufacturers to bring down the price of food. I mean, food is so bloody expensive in this. A lot of people end up getting McDonald's regularly because it's really cheap. Mm. A lot of people, time is expensive though, Melanie says. A lot of people don't have the time for food preparation. Very true. But there's really easy ways to cook food in minutes. I'm telling you. Yeah, there has to, I suppose there does really have. Is. I mean, it's interesting. Our new Confessions of a Modern Parent this week talks about whether having 20 minutes to spend with your children in a day doing some sort of either backup learning or support learning or, or just listening to them and talking to them. Is 20 minutes too much to ask of a modern day parent or should it just automatically come in the job description? I do mm. think we all have some burden of responsibility and if you think to that, our own bodies in some that way. That what you put, would you go and put three star petrol in your car and expect it to run well? We just, whether it's uncomfortable conversation or not, we have to keep having this conversation. What you eat will make a difference to whether you live your life with dis-ease, disease or not. It's such a powerful tool. And, you know, the fact that most schools, our daughter doesn't learn how to cook at school. Most schools don't do it. If, you know, going back to what Jamie Oliver was trying to do all that while ago, the government should be pouring money into that. Send people out of school that can cook and prepare great food for them. I'm telling you, down the line, it will bring down the cost for the NHS, diabetes, all the things that come from a bad and unhealthy diet, yeah. COVID. I mean, do you remember Italy? Do you remember how bad they were at the beginning of the pandemic? But it pandemic? staggers me how Part of why their numbers aren't so are. bad is because their diet is excellent. They live the longest out of anyone. L44 Italians. says diet is vital. vital. I think you also said diet is viral. Bad diet is viral. That's an interesting point. I mean, you know, it's so staggeringly obvious. I don't but it's care. too right. diff It's too difficult to message. I think they just can't be bothered with messaging. And I just reckon there's got to be some kind of commercial contingent uh, can i just say l44 as someone who is vulnerable i understand everyone's need to return to normality but unfortunately that means i feel left behind marginalized absolutely and horrible. horrible horrible but i think the situation that we've got at the moment 
is that a lot of people are also feeling that with their illnesses. You know, the people that aren't getting yeah. the scans for cancer, the people that aren't getting that back operation that is completely debilitating their, you know, that back pain that's completely debilitating. Every day you hear thousands of stories of people that feel left behind yeah. by this pandemic. So it is an impossible situation for, it looks like a bird just fell out yeah. of the sky. It's an impossible situation that everybody's going to feel okay. But I think with two years, with almost constant focus on this one disease, it's time to give other people that are suffering mm. a bit more of a chance. Um, absolutely. Just jumping on onto another subject, because we've already hit half an hour. Uh, Djokovic, allegedly, Djokovic's father says he's been arrested after a judge cleared him in Australia. This is incredible. Um, I was trying to see if this was true or whether this was just sort of hyperbole coming from his dad. But um, by all accounts, he's been arrested by the... It, 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 basically, a judge said he was fine to play. They rescinded the restrictions. He had antibodies from a previous COVID infection and couldn't get a COVID uh, vaccine because he'd been previously infected. Uh, that all seemed to be clear. And, and then now, it, allegedly, or so I've heard, it, uh, someone's... Uh, they, it looks like the Australian government have arrested him. Just well, Melanie's just saying apparently he hasn't been arrested. Oh. Maybe some new news has come in. Just so before maybe we started this, yeah, this was the it, news. It was breaking everywhere in the yeah. sun and what have you. Maybe you could go, have a Google of that. It might be interesting. tra la la for My son has COVID at uni in the USA. He was put onto a bus, taken to isolation. He has no idea where he is to stay there for 10 days. $30 a day for microwave food. You're oh kidding God. me. That's like something out oh, of Oh, tra la la. I'm God, so that's sorry. Awful. That's really hard for him. And as a mum, yeah. oh my, I'm trying to actually imagine if that was my child being bussed yeah. off and having to live on £30 a day yeah, microwave yeah. food. Yeah. I mean, at a time when you need the best nutrition, when you're ill, have your bone broth, have your cut up bits of oranges, have your, that's when you need to feed your way out yeah. of illness. Oh my God, it makes me so angry absolutely oh. um there's a cypriot scientist who has found delta and omicron have combined he's called it delta cron uh i just thought this was interesting in terms of the name um but the scientist's finds have been dismissed by the brits because apparently he had both viruses in the same pipette or in the same <laughs> now either this will go one of two ways either the cypriot doctor was absolutely right and it's british exceptionalism yet again or he's made a genuine mistake. We do seem to have a problem believing scientists from other countries. We do, which we do. I think we have a track record mm. in that. So you might hear the word, again, I just want to say, you might hear the word Deltacron. Uh, and if you do, this has come from Cyprus. I, I believe it's Cyprus. Um, and But he's being pushed back by the West, suggesting he's made a mistake. Now, Michael Gove was trapped in a BBC lift this morning, you need to know, for half an hour before he could get on Radio 4. And I just wanted to know, does anyone else hate lifts? Do people have a, a lift phobia? I'll tell you what I hate about lifts. I hate lift mirrors. Oh. Because you can be in a hotel, you can do yourself, tart yourself up, feel like you look fantastic, and then you get into a lift, and because it's always that horrible downward lighting, you look terrible. No, I agree. Uh, yeah, you walk in and the only thing you can look at, and also... Like, oh my God, I look awful! <laughs> yeah. And did you think, I always liked it in the Pink Panther when there was always that person who farted in a lift. Do you remember? And you always know that someone will fart in a lift. I've never been in a I've lift. I've been in a lift and someone's farted. Like and if there's only two of you and the other person says it wasn't me and it wasn't you, you know they're a pathological liar. Yeah. But our daughter Maddie, she had a phobia of lifts when she got her head caught in a lift door once. Um, and You're she could, she couldn't, she couldn't, she couldn't, she couldn't get into a lift for about 20 years virtually. She's only just... She's only just come Do you remember back. how lovely they were? They gave yeah, her a teddy because they, they felt so bad. She was so about sweet. three or four. Yeah, she was. Yeah. Um, and finally, the Golden Globes. It was the Golden Globes last night, but the Golden Globes are shrouded in all sorts of shame because they are being held accountable for not... Uh, for underrepresenting and not being diverse enough. So, in fact, it was a Golden Globe Awards without any glitz or glam or showbiz or pomp and ceremony. It was a very quiet, low-key affair. I think it was only done on social media. But um, notable winners are West Side Story, won Best Musical slash Comedy. Um, Will Smith won for King Richard, playing the Williams sisters' uh, father. Uh, Succession. I see that. Succession was won Best Drama Series. Yes! Yet again. Nicole Kidman won for Being the Ricardos, which... I think is a fair win because we, we saw film. that over the so Christmas period. Good. She was yeah. brilliant. If you haven't seen Being the Ricardos, 
do check it out. It's not quite... Well, it is what you think it'll we be, but then it's be, something yeah. more. Yeah, we do. Uh, Rachel Zegler, the lead in West Side Story, won Best Actress in a Musical. Um, what else have we got? No Time to Die won Best Song. So uh, Billie Eilish has won a Golden Globe. I reckon she could be winning an Oscar this year. Mm. Dune won Original Score. Belfast won Original Screenplay. Looking forward to that. Kenneth Branagh uh, directed and written movie based on his childhood. Um, and what else have we got? Jeremy Strong won for Succession. Uh, Kate Winslet won for Mayor of yes, East Town. Yes, one of my absolute favorite. Uh, And rather brilliantly, if you've seen Squid Game, I'm, I'm not going to pronounce his name correctly, but Oh, oh Young Su, who played the old man in it. Won 77 best years old. Yeah, I love this. Best supporting actor yeah. in the series. He was fantastic in it. Which is it. just wonderful. Uh, Sarah Snook won in Succession, which is great. And Jean Smart won in Hacks, though she was also brilliant as Kate Winslet's mother in Mayor of East Town. Oh, I, I loved it. Oh, God, is that actually yeah, so different? She won for another comedy We need series. to do a few hellos. Yes, and... well, a welcome to Ruth Blanford, who's joined after being a subscriber for a while. Ruth, Ruth. welcome to the family guest. Daddy, ha, Ruth. Ruth. Bloody hell, that was good. Blanford, welcome to the family guest. Here we are. And then a happy birthday for Chloe. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday, birthday dear Chloe. Chloe. Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Could we do a sing song for Harry's birthday today and Charlie's tomorrow? Harry happy and Charlie. Birthday, Harry. Happy birthday, Harry. Happy birthday, Harry. Happy birthday, dear Harry. Happy birthday to you. And Charlie, happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Charlie. Happy birthday to you. And one more, which Nads will do for you beautifully, Susie. Happy birthday, Susie. Happy birthday, Susie. Happy birthday, dear Susie. Happy birthday, to you. There you go, guys. So, guys, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because the notification bell will notify you when we're live. There's a Meals in Minutes going up later. And... Um, we are vlogging behind the scenes. Stuff is coming. Stuff. Oh, top 10 films of the year will be coming with uh, me and Nanny Dye giving you our top 10 roundup of the Popcorn Junkies' favourite movies. And also, go and check out my Instagram feed and watch Mark dancing if you need a little cheer up. Oh, there you go.